everyone, it's Jesse from Bear Flower Farm. I am three days away from my final market of the year and it is a winter holiday market. I was planning on only selling my soaps and candles, which is why I actually did a video a couple of weeks back on just how I did during my first year of flower farming at a farmer's market. I was not expecting to have these blooms to sell. So I figured I would give you guys an update. The really astounding thing is that I was able to harvest my first hydroponically forced winter tulip uh, 30 days after I got the bulbs, which is incredibly fast. I was able to shave off basically about two to three weeks worth of time. I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I push those limits, but I just wanted to first show you where I am right now. This is Friday, so they still have another full day, technically full day and a half to grow. I could still harvest on Sunday morning. Uh, these tulips, as you probably know, if you've grown tulips, grow so fast. Um, you know, the difference between just 24 hours is huge. Even 12 hours is huge. So let's take a look at where we are right now. So there are quite a few buds here, as you can tell. Um, you know, one could argue that some of these are technically ready for pulling like this one. And this one, these are parrots. And what I do want to do is give them a little bit more time underneath the lights to be able to um, get a little bit more color. So these are the cabana parrots. And they're basically a white with a flush of pink ribbing in the parrot. So, you know, a lot of these are just a little bit more, um, you know, we'll call it like subtle tone pastel pink, which is not a bad thing in my view. So um, here are some that I harvested a bit earlier. These will actually go into my garage where it is very cool. It's 38 degrees in the garage. I'm hoping I'll get a little bit more stem length out of these. I actually need to replace them into a a uh, taller jar because tulips have a habit of drooping if you don't support them. So those will go into the garage soon. But yeah, this is where I am right now. So I would be planning on pulling, you know, something like this, this later in the evening today. Um, the really exciting thing is look at this stem length. I mean, it is, it is astounding how just how tall these are for being forced so early. Um, and, you know, basically rushing the process for them. Now I do have some smaller ones. So, you know, this is a really good example. This is, I think, a good example of a tulip that has bolted. Um, so if you grow vegetables, if you grow flowers, you'll know that bolting happens when it gets too hot for the plant and the plant is basically trying to um, how do you say, like rescue itself in the sense that it's shooting up flowers or a bud to be able to regenerate seed for the next year, right? Because the entire purpose of a flower is to be able to regenerate, produce offspring and, you know, be able to multiply, right? So bolting happens when the flower doesn't think it has enough time for that to happen. So it shoots up a flower very early. And the risk here is that you have small stems. And that is typically the trade-off that you have with pushing the limits on something like this, where you're trying to grow it at, um, you know, the upper limits of temperature. You're trying to give it a lot of light and the bull thinks that summer is approaching. So, um, you know, it's, it's either going to bolt and shoot up a very short stem or you might be um, compromising the stem length growth here. But, you know, in this case, what I did was I, so first of all, we, if you follow my last video, at this point, our water heater, our old inefficient water heater is gone as well as the boiler. So this is the new combi uh, boiler and water heater. And what it did was it actually dropped the temperature of this basement room by about four to five degrees, which is pretty significant. So I'm growing in here probably around 64, 65 degrees at any given moment. And I think the tulips have really, really loved it. So, um, you know, even that minor adjusted temperature for me was pretty huge because I got to the point on Wednesday where I was like, I really need to slow these down. Now, you know, I am in a, how do you say, in an advantage because right now it is so cold outside. The garage is staying at approximately like 38 to 40 degrees. So it's acting as like a natural cooler. So I can always cut these. I can put them into a bucket, put it into the garage, and they will also gain a little bit more stem length there. But I also didn't want them all blowing open just, you know, a couple of weeks or a couple of days before the market. I, um, you know, I kind of like it 
where I can pull it a little bit closer to market date. Um, you know, I think that's just me being used to uh, flower farming in the summer. Although, you know, I have a lot more buffer with these. So what I started to do is I started shutting down these lights at night um, and then giving the, them the opportunity to lengthen. And I think that really did make a difference for some of these because I would say that like one of these over here, this one, I mean, this is a really, really long one. I would say this is probably about 13 inches. This guy here probably grew about two, three inches within this week alone. So pretty incredible. The other thing I have been loving about hydroponically forced tulips is if I want to harvest, I literally just pull up. Like it is so easy. Um, it is just, it's, it's pretty much a very clean way to harvest. If I wanted to, I could split this bulb and get a few more inches off or an inch or two off of it, but I clearly don't need to for this stem. So it's just, you know, even harvesting is a lot more fun um, instead of digging through the soil to um, get your bulb and then having to clean it from the soil. So that has been a pleasant surprise. And so thinking about how we normally have to harvest tulips in the field, you know, sometimes we get these really, really sh short stems and that's when you have to dig through further to get more stem length or get the bulb, right? So many of us cut right above the bulb for the extra stem length, but I just want to show you what, you know, it kind of looks like because right now the cool part about growing in hydro is that you get to see basically all of the tulip and what that growth looks like. So if you look at a tulip like this one over here, right? Let's say that this was buried in the field in soil. Your soil is probably at least hopefully four inches above the bulb, bulb for insulation purposes. So assuming you cover the bulb, your soil is probably at this line. So now you're getting a tulip at this length and it looks really, really short. But if you were to be able to dig up that entire bulb and split the bulb over here, you actually get a much longer stem. So, you know, the takeaway here is that if you are growing field grown tulips and you have a shorter stem, you have really another, I would say like four or five inches that you can gain if you're willing to put the work to, you know, dig it out full bulb and clean it and, you know, take out the bulb here. So just, just a tip there for those who um, get freaked out by short tulips. It is now a few hours later. I'm actually just about to work out. But every day when I work out, I come in and I check out my tulip bulbs that are rooting. I give them a little bit of air. So I figured I would take you along and show you what I have right now in my garage. So you can actually see I've got more trays of hydroponics coming in. These will be ready to go into the grow room in three days. Um, there's actually two stacks over here. So there's another box here. Um, this is actually a soil force crate over here. So I do have some so soil or trying to force in soil and I have five more crates outside. Um, I was trying to take advantage of the rain yesterday. So you can actually see there's a little bit of mice damage in the, quarter, uh, in the corner. I found that the mice really love the crates. And I think um, after talking to my friend, she was saying that, you know, mice at the end of the day want to also feel protected. So probably the act of digging and feeling like that they have cover is, um, you know, is it seems like it's less risky than going out into the open and chewing one of these hydro bulbs. That being said, they definitely chewed the hydro bulbs. <laughs> So you'll have noticed that those bulbs are all in the cardboard boxes. And I found that that is actually a decent mice deterrent. So obviously mice can chew through cardboard. They haven't done it yet. So I've been reusing those cardboard boxes. And at night, what I do is I close the lid. So that way it makes it relatively airtight, which is not great for the bulbs because it facilitates mold. So you can see that there actually is some mold on here. And what will happen is once I bring them inside, I will actually wipe off the mold with a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. And it's worked well with my other trays before. But the main reason why I actually leave the mold in those or on those bulbs in those boxes is because they are also a mouse deterrent. And so I found that when I had trays of perfect bulbs, basically like very little blemishes, like zero sign of disease, the mice would go to town on those trays and they would obviously leave the trays that had a little bit of like penicillium um, just untouched. And it makes a lot of sense because 
animals should know what's poisonous and what's not. So they understand not to touch the bulbs that are diseased or have some sort of mold. So sometimes if I forget to close those boxes, I come back out and they're fine. Um, and I think it's because the mice are actually selective and know not to go near them. So that is actually the one advantage of having not perfect bulbs uh, rooting in a place where you have a lot of critters. It is Saturday, one day later, and so exciting. Look at this Allison Bradley. She is ready to be pulled. Look at that. Now, this is a little bit shorter in terms of stem length. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this bulb and get another inch and a half off. But look at this. Look at that color. Perfect. I've had my coffee, some breakfast, and I'm just getting ready for the market. So these are all the tulips that I currently have right now. I'm definitely going to have more. I'm actually harvesting multiple times a day. So it helps that it is the weekend. It was a Friday yesterday, so I was at home. I harvested probably four times yesterday. That's how fast tulips are blowing open in this, um, I would say 65 degree growing environment. And the reason why I'm not harvest harvesting them too early is because I want them to get a little bit more color. I have found that as they're sitting in the garage in, I would say that's an average of maybe like 42 degrees, they are putting on a little bit more color, but for whatever reason, the ones that I'm harvesting right now seem to have a little bit less color. So, any case, I'll see how that goes. Hopefully just sitting one more night before my market is gonna help them put on a little bit more color. But I wanna do a quick check-in to show you how much the tulips have grown in the vase with some water in a cool environment that is mostly dark to not super sunny. I mean, we had very cloudy, rainy weather over the last couple of days and um, these were in the garage. I didn't cover them because I wanted them to have some airflow, but let's check and see the length. So I'm going to put a photo on the left, but you can see over here that this is the first tulip in that photo. And we are now at 13 inches, just a little bit above 13 inches. So this gained a little more than an inch over two nights. Um, there's another tulip that I had um, that I harvested the day after. So I'll put this over here and this one did not gain as much. But again, you know, this one had one less night and so it's gained about half an inch now the irony is that i was trying to prolong the tulip length but i'm actually going to sell them in the jars and they're getting a little too tall for the jars but you know that's totally fine um so yeah uh these are more um, i'm going to play around with the arrangement of them you can tell what i'm saying where these were ones that were pulled earlier and you can see they're definitely getting a little bit more color this one also but then these are the ones that i pulled a little bit later it might've been yesterday or today, and you can see that there's a little bit less color, but it's still it's still a really nice variegation. Here's my little Allison Bradley that's coming in. This is the early double. Um, I will, I think, actually have another one or two before tomorrow downstairs. And yeah, so it's, um, you know, I where's the other one? This one is the one that I wanted to show you. This one came out really pink on its own. So I think a part of the coloring is also just the bulb itself. Um, yeah, so I think once I do a mix to make sure that there's some of the darker pink, some of this kind of pink, hopefully I can get another Allison Bradley or two, um, mix it up with the white, you know, it'll, it'll look really good. So I'm pretty excited and I am doing some, I'll call it market research on my personal Instagram to see what people would pay for a jar like this. To be honest, I'm a little bit just concerned because even though parrots open up beautifully and they get really big and dramatic. If you don't know what a parrot is, you would think that these are gonna remain small. So I'm just afraid that they may not fetch the amount that I originally wanted, but we'll see what my friends online say. All right, it is time to try to see if we can speed things up. So I put this light up here, which does generate some heat. Ideally, it would actually be hanging down a little bit more, but I think it's okay. So the goal is more light, a little bit more heat, trying to get a couple of these Allison Bradleys to peek out a little bit more. I mean, at this point, like you can see this bud over here, like this will be ready for tomorrow because this was in this age yesterday at this time, but I can feel 
the buds. They just need a crack open. The one worrying thing is that these are definitely shorter than the parrots that have been coming. So I think at the very minimum though, these, if they aren't ready for tomorrow, will definitely be ready for Christmas. And I can definitely put them into the refrigerator or not refrigerator, into the garage. But yeah, this is what the grow space is looking like right now. All right, it is Sunday morning, couple hours before the market. And let's see how these guys look. Do we have more ready? And we do. So definitely more parrots ready. Actually, Allison Bradley is not fully ready yet so i'm not going to pick her but yeah we've got more to harvest and i've got some jars that were ready so i'm just going to harvest these and put them in jars and we're going to go over to the market So here we are, look at those, they're beautiful. Here are the ones that I made yesterday. We actually have six jars. So what I ended up doing was I pre-made these jars. I put ribbon, I put a little bit of an information card on them. So these are cabana tulips, but I'm calling them candy cane flowers just because they have this, you know, candy cane like look to it. And then I put a little bit about the hydroponics in the back. And so I'm just gonna put seven of these into a jar and I plan on selling each of these for $15. So we should actually be able to fill up at least two more jars and finish this jar over here. So I'm gonna do that right now. As anticipated, we have three extra jars, which brings it to a total of nine jars. So I'm pretty excited to see how these do. And I did actually pick that Allison Bradley because it looked like she was cracked open enough. So I picked her at a later stage yesterday. You could tell that she's just opening up. And I actually kept these in my uh, dining room last night. Um, the house is set at like 64 degrees. I wanted them to open up just a little bit because it is going to be 38 degrees of a high today and I just wanted to um, to make sure they were slightly open and this is what happens when you forget to fill it up with water but these will come back so not super worried. See these tulips have had about 45 minutes to rehydrate and they perked right back up so good to go here. Hey guys we just got here to the market and just finished setting up. I'm pretty happy with the booth setup. It looks a little bit different than before. I put all of the holiday stuff into one corner with the tulips. I'll show you what it looks like. We are about one hour and 15 minutes into the market and I've sold five of the tulips in addition to a lot of other candles. So, so far so good. So we have about an hour and a half left in the market. The candles have been doing really well. The tulips, however, we've come to a bit of a plateau. So I still have four jars left. Everyone's really intrigued by the concept of me growing them in the basement, but they just haven't moved. So we'll see what happens in the last hour and a half. All right, we are winding on the market. I have three of the tulip jars left, but lots of the candles are gone. So not a bad market. And I will do a financial breakdown when we get back. But first, we are actually having a holiday party potluck with the rest of the farmers or the, the rest of the vendors here. So pretty excited to go to that. All right, so we are back from the market, back from the after party, and finally defrosted with a nice cup of tea so today was really cold we were expecting a high of 38 degrees fahrenheit with sunny weather somehow that sunny weather became completely cloudy weather and that completely changed the wind chill and just 
ju just the enjoyment, I guess, of being outside. And the reason why I bring this up is because it also impacted the traffic. So I don't actually think it impacted the number of people who showed up, but it impacted how long they stayed because a lot of people were underdressed. Um, they were wearing hoodies instead of proper winter coats. So um, those people showed up and they were just quickly rushing through the market. And then there were even some people who thought that the market was going to be indoors. I think prior to COVID, the holiday market was always indoors where we had the after party. And just because of COVID and everything, they still kept it outside. So for that variety of reasons, you had very uh, hurried shoppers who were on a mission to get in and out. Now, all that being said, I think I still did decently well. Um, so my total sales today were $615. Now, I bet that you're very curious about how I did with my tulips, and I'm going to say that um, I did okay with the tulips. I didn't do fantastic, but I did a number that I feel positive about. So you saw earlier that I brought nine jars. I was selling each of those jars at $15. Now, what I did was I initially did some market research through my personal Instagram. I feel like the people who I'm friends with, who follow me on Instagram, they're kind of like similar to the target demographic that comes to this market. So I had a bunch of people who said they, were, they would be willing to pay anywhere from 15 to $20. So I just put it at $15 just because pockets are tight right now. You know, you're, we're kind of all competing for the same, um, or we're, we're all competing for dollars, right? For holiday shopping. And this year, it's just a more limited budget. So I didn't want to price it at a point where it felt unattainable. And, you know, to be honest, I think some of these tulips, even though they're going to unfurl and be bigger, they're still a little bit smaller um, in terms of what I would have liked them to be. So I put seven into a jar, priced it at $15, and I sold six out of those nine jars. This was definitely a pilot high and watch them come type of situation because when I had all nine jars on the table, I definitely attracted a lot of attention. People would stop, they would turn and look at me and have this puzzled look as to like, how do you have fresh tulips? So it was a really, really great conversation starter. And some of those people converted into either buying tulips or buying some of my candles. So I would say that, you know, if I didn't bring nine jars, I don't know if I would have sold six jars, right? Meaning that if I didn't harvest additional ones this morning, I don't know if I would have sold all six. Um, so that being said, I think that people also were not necessarily coming to the market looking for flowers. This is not the time of year that you come looking for flowers. I was actually right across um, the other vendor who sells plants. Now they are primarily a landscaping company, but they had wreaths, they had shrubs, they had like potted plants that you get at nurseries for your doorsteps and, you know, that kind of deck decorating stuff. So, you know, maybe it was a little bit too close to Christmas because today is December 18th. We are a full week away from Christmas. That guy unfortunately sold one pot. So it kind of gives you an idea for the kind of traffic that we had this year. Now, I've been told that for the last two years, this market did fantastic because if you think about it, um, we had supply chain issues online, uh, we had shipping delays online, and then the malls were not really open to the extent that uh, they used to be before COVID. So a lot of people came out to that farmer's market. This year was definitely just very different. You know, today's foot traffic was not bad but it was not great so just given all that i'm still pretty happy that i was able to sell six of the nine jars had some great conversations i mean the way that i talked about it was this is like my little science experiment i'm growing it in my basement and i think people were like very tickled by the fact that i was growing that in my basement so you know i was really there today honestly for my candles and to sell the rest of the soap. I had mentioned in an earlier video that I'm winding down my soap and candle company. So um, I have a ton of candle inventory, but the problem is all my candle inventory was not holiday scented. And so I actually bought um, wholesale from another company called Santa's Naturals. And um, I just really liked the way that their packaging was. I liked, like we have kind of similar values in terms of just the types of ingredients that we use wanting to be sustainable. So I thought it would be a really great fit. And I was, I was right. Um, I sold, I almost sold out all of the candles. I almost, uh, I sold out a lot of the hand salve even. And so the really great thing was I actually sell wholesale 
through an online portal called FAIR, F-A-I-R-E. And I sell that, I, I, I use that portal for wholesale for my bar soaps and candles. And, you know, that is actually a really big outlet for me. I would say I do about 20% of my soap sales through that portal. And so I, I love being a seller on that portal. And then I signed up to become a buyer. And as a buyer, you have access to all of these boutique brands at basically wholesale prices. So it's usually half the price. And because I was a new buyer, Fair gave me a 50% off coupon. So basically, if a candle retailed for $12, I was able to buy it $6 and then Fair gave me another 50% off. So I acquired it at $3. So that's why this was actually a very profitable market for me. And to be honest, I also bought a lot of those candles for my husband who is a realtor and he was sending out thank you gifts to a bunch of his clients. So effectively what I was able to do was I was able to provide him free candles and stuff for his gifts because I was able to sell the rest that he didn't gift um, at my farmer's market and that more than made up the amount that we spent. So we got some hand salve, we got some candles for ourselves, he got to gift and I got to sell and make a tiny bit of profit off of that. So let's talk about the numbers right now. I said I brought in $615 today. Of that $75 was flower sales, which meant that 540 was related to soap and candles, of which the majority was candles. My cost of goods sold for everything was $257. And that is about, we'll call it like a third of, um, of my revenue. If you, if you saw one of my earlier videos uh, this month about just how I did a farmer's market, you'll see that this is actually a little bit lower in terms of the percentage of um, my, my COGS as a percentage of revenue than a normal market. And it is because of that discount I got in acquiring these candles. Um, labor is the same $90. Mileage to market is $20. Mileage for inventory, I'm putting $10 here because I did drive to a local craft store. I drove to, I think my local Target to get some mason jars, ribbon, that kind of stuff. Credit card fees, $15. Um, sales tax $41, which, you know, 6% does add up for a 6.625% to be precise. So that leaves me with a total profit of $182. Now for me, the name of the game right now is getting cash flow in to pay for my bulbs. So the majority of my bulbs just came in, I would say about three weeks ago. Um, it was on a credit card, which means I have net 30 day payment terms. So my credit card is coming due up in a few weeks. So right now it matters less about how much money I made in terms of profit. And it matters more about what is in the bank account, right? Because I need to be able to basically have the money to be able to pay those bulbs. So having an extra $615 in the bank account definitely helps that credit card payment. So all in all, I would say that this was a really good trial run for me to force tulips and get a good understanding of just how to troubleshoot, what to expect in terms of rate of growth for Valentine's Day, right? Valentine's Day is that like big day that all of us flower growing people are looking forward to. And so, you know, for me, this was less about making money at Christmas. Um, and it was more about being able to feel confident to do it for Valentine's Day. Now, that being said, it's still not Christmas. Um, Christmas is a week away and then New Year's is another week away. I have, I was just downstairs, I have about three trays that are still, um, that still need a bloom, right? And so three trays times, we'll call it 70 each. Um, that's about 210 stems. So I have quite a stems that I do need to uh, push through um, in terms of getting it out to customers. I need to find those customers. So I'm planning on doing a lot of marketplace. And if for some reason that doesn't work out, I'm just going to walk into a florist with a bucket um, and then a few photos of my hydroponic setup and see what they say. But it was kind of funny because the person across from me, the one that was the landscaping company, they actually have a florist shop. The problem is they're a little bit far off. They're about like four 40 minutes away but he was like yeah like we'll buy tulips for you basically um we do funerals we do weddings like it's it's a 365 day round your shopping we try to support local so I might even go that route if I have to um but yeah so overall I would say productive I have not been this excited for a market in a really long time which was nice so despite the cold despite everything you know i achieved a lot of what i wanted to do right i achieved 
the hydroponic piece of it, um, getting the blooms for today, I didn't think that was possible. I achieved being able to get some cash flow to pay off my credit cards. And I also achieved the ability to move inventory so that I don't have to store it since I'm winding down the shop. So hopefully this was a helpful video for you. Drop me comments below if you have any questions or any suggestions for me and I will see you next time.